Hi, I'm Melinda Van Fleet, and welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. I'm a success coach, speaker, and business consultant, and my husband Ryan and I were laid off the same time 10 years ago. We moved to the Florida Keys without jobs, not knowing anyone, hardly any money, and we'd never even been here. But we made it, and now we're living our best lives. And all along on our journey, I've said that someday when we get our quote unquote shit together, we will help others. And since then, we've both done a lot of self-work and built successful businesses. So that day is here, and one of my ways of paying it forward is through this podcast. Each week, my intent is to be relatable and bring you tactical tips, tools, share my learnings and stories that can help inspire or transform you wherever you are in your career or general life and make an impact. I strongly believe that if I can do it, you can do it too. So what's stopping you? Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach podcast. I am always grateful that you join me on the adventure of this podcast with some fabulous guests. And this week, I have returning guests, Dr. Isabel and Dr. June, and they are a Sumisu. And they were both on episode 93, where we talked about everything from tongue scrapers to body types and weight loss to naps and to the five conscious actions and how, you know, some people don't even take all those actions and how we can move through that. And it was just a pleasure and a delight to have them on the podcast. I personally learned so much. So when they announced that they were going to be hosting a free webinar series, which is three Friday nights in a row. It kicks off this Friday night, January 8th at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then it is the 15th and the 22nd. And it is a journey to your quantum nature. And I just, I was all of us. I had to sign up immediately (laughs) because I love learning about energy and I love what um, these two friends of mine have to say. So I am going to kick it off to Dr. June and he is going to explain what quantum nature is about and take it from there. Welcome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting us, Melinda. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you both for coming back. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we are very excited to, um, you know, to take the people to the journey. And the title that we came up with this uh, coming up to webinars called journey to your quantum nature. So the people say, what, what is the quantum nature, right? <laughs> Isn't it? So you, you <laughs> totally. So I was like, you have to explain all this. <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of a trendy, fashionable word these days. People use the quantum, but then people know what the nature is, right? So if you say, what is your nature? If I ask you, Mary, now, what would you say? What's your nature? Yeah, I would say it's just either... Me being like how I'm feeling, or even my head goes to like personality, you know, just kind of wakes up what makes up me, but right. it's kind of gray. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when people ask nature, it means that you know, often they refer to nature like a true your being, right? Mm-hmm. So, you have the fundamental being who you are, but then that comes with you, you know, when you're born as a baby. But then environment, in a way, you're growing up, how the you know, parents in your, your you know, society, the schools, and everything starts forming the certain direction of who you became. But so there's a quantum means that there's an unlimited potentiality that exists, just like a wave. But then the, right now, you're focused on the one little particle, and then that manifests you, who you are right now. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Yeah. So then we want to bring back to your fundamental the genius know what you truly you, you know you become the, your best version of yourself applying that uh, from the quantum principle which is the wave of the potentiality bring back to okay if you're suffering or you're not really feeling your genius zone you know, or you know right on it how can I help you guide you transform you towards that your best version of yourself so this three parts are going to narrow focus down to quantum mind, that's the part one, and quantum body, and then quantum self. So it's got to be the three-week series of these parts that forming the journeys. Wow. Got it. 
That is very cool. Yes. So, Dr. Isabel is going to explain how the first part one, quantum mind, how, this, you know, how, how we can help us to transform into this, your best version of yourself from the mind part of it. Yes. So, we also, when we were thinking about the quantum nature, is nature being as the origin of the human being or our, the nature, our origin, where we're coming from. And what we have seen lately when quantum physics and quantum mechanics started is that they, they started changing and shifting the way we see things as just only matter. And they started seeing that we are more than just uh, a matter. We're just the, more than just a body. So when, when we go and look at our human anatomy, we see that our body has systems and then each system has organs. Within the organ, there's cells. And then when we go deeper and study the cells, we find that there's sub subatomic particles. And then within those particles, what they found is that there are other particles and then one of the smallest particles are the quanta. Or, and then this, the, when they started studying this, this little particles, they found that there is more space, empty space is like 99.9% percent of that it's it's a space and what is in there is only energy so if we go from the little part of it that we are it's energy uh, to the bigger part we're basically energy everything around us is energy and then if we start thinking like that even our thoughts are energy so and then when we start thinking about that it's like okay so if my thoughts are energy then Maybe the way I'm thinking, it will affect the way my reality is. You know, we, if we start looking at what uh, Dr. Hawking did, he did an analysis or a study of the emotions, for example, and then they were able to detect the frequency of those emotions. So if we're thinking about or experiencing emotions that are in a lower frequency, lower vibration, then our body can have effects, can have consequences because we are in that lower frequency vibration and our mind is going towards that. And a big example of this could be a placebo, the placebo effect. So when we have a placebo pill, for example, and it's basically sugar, we give that to the patient and the patient responds in a positive way to the symptoms then the only thing that was affecting in there or that was changing is the way the patient was thinking about the medicine that is going to be helping the symptoms that he was having because the medicine was not really doing anything. It was not really a medicine. It was a sugar pill. It was a placebo pill. So then we, we need to start thinking that the power of the mind is just incredible. And we can, if we can heal just by thought alone, we can transform our life just by thought alone. We can transform our health, our abundance. We can just change the way we see and experience things. And that's one of the things that we want to share with people. And we want them to start kind of analyzing and seeing their life in a different way. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we, we, we know is that a big percentage of our thoughts are unfortunately negative and if we are constantly thinking in a negative way then that's how our life is just going to be reflecting our negativity and we will be attracting will be becoming as a magnet attracting negative things to our life so the power of the mind is really important and that's why we wanted to start the webinar with the quantum mind that's the first friday that's january 8th Gotcha. Now I have a question because you talked about, I want to make sure I got it right. Quanta. So that is actually like the cells. I just want to make sure I'm referring to this correctly. That's, and that people actually, scientists could see under the microscope our cells and actually see the space where the energy is. Is that, did I understand that correctly? 
Yes, there is. There is. Um, they are using, of course, not just regular microscope. It right. has to be. Uh, uh, <laughs> not, like, not, not from my high school. That I remember. Yeah. Exactly. Right yeah. So they 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 use <laughs> a special like microscope <laughs> to be able to see this. Um, it's smaller. It's it's just really small. Um, smaller than the than the pot the the the, the, the pot like mm, protons neutrons and the electrons yeah. those are actually bigger compared to the and there's call there are quarks in there that are part of the particles that are releasing some of the energy so when they interact there is a release of energy and that's what causes our just our energy the energy in our body and then even our heart so our heart has cells in there and then when we are when there is these cells are making the connection and these little particles are kind of generating the the energy then we can see that the energy on the heart can be as big as like for example mother Teresa, they were saying that the energy that she was releasing from the heart was like i believe it was two three blocks it was just immense because her gratitude and the love that she was sharing for for everybody was immense that there was so much energy releasing from 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 her body wow it is amazing that is really amazing mm -hmm. and you're again you're t you're also taking me back to sophomore year in high school when you're in science class at least i was and you have to watch a video on screen and they show you all the the cells right so it, yes it at least to me as a very visual person it helps me to relate to that and go oh wow now i you know i can see it like understand you understand the basic premise especially because a lot of people you know refer to energy talk about energy write about energy but then when you can visualize the cells and mm -hmm. visualize space around the cells and that's where energy lives it just puts it more into a i don't know i can't think of the word practical is not really the best word but something along those lines so that's very cool thank you yeah, yes you're welcome yeah so think about this mary that's all just basically the chemistry you know there are three different forms of the water right water when you don't have this movement those h2o if they don't move well between the h2o as a molecule that's called a solid, that's the ice cube, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you start melting, they start getting liquid, then the liquid water, that's a different form of the H2O, right? And right. then the movement of H2O becomes faster and faster, they become the vapor, correct? So then what difference between those H2O, they're all the same, is that different form of the energetic potential where the movement of the vibration is very slow versus really fast that changed it because of the energetic components of this molecule, how they move, that changed the formation of these molecules. Mm. Yes, yes, so true. So when we think of just how we've all been raised, and then mm -hmm. actually it's like leveling up your thought process to understand that, no, this is, this is bigger than just what we were, <laughs> we were taught in school, you know, about, um, you know. Yes basic science so very cool correct yeah. in part two is in regard to the body yes so the doctor is about to really you know, she summarized really well so the quantum mind is first that our mind can really move our biology how your cells the nervous system the hormones the, ever since the ch moves based on your thoughts right mm -hmm. so then now you see how this mind part of it influences you know, your physical body. Then the quantum body part of it, because we are all so unique individual, like the way they come from the culture, the weathers, you know, what they're feeding, all of them is different worldwide. So then think about this with how that possible for you to all of a sudden move to um, Asia, start eating Asian food that you never grown up eating. So is it your body going to agree with you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a simple question, right? So our body said, well, I'm not quite to not, you know, work with certain food, right? right. Because the body doesn't recognize a certain enzyme and a certain, you know, the nutrients that are very unique to that region. So the quantum body approach, what we are really going to discuss about is that 
very unique individuals so that we have a body types we call in the DNA blood types and they're also in the Indian medicine Ayurvedic medicine called the dosha we have different three different types you know kapha beta vata and also we have this metabolic we we are all different between the somebody have a faster metabolism versus a slow metabolism and then DNA can show you ancestry speaking how your body go, was eating your ancestor and then how much enzyme available in your DNA. So there's a many components involved in creating the, your unique quantum body that are very specific to you. And then if you really match your specific needs to your physiological body, then your body can really optimize as a quantum body. So then you can really turn, for, uh, transform yourself into the best, better version or the best version of your physical body. And including that, that's also not just a nutrition, that exercise, the movement that are very unique to the individual as well. And uh, we're going to talk about the circadian rhythm. So the sleeping patterns, based on your hormonal cycle, who you are, how you are, depends on the way you come from. Think about the Northern hemisphere versus the Southern hemisphere with equators, North Pole, South Pole, we all different how we are exposed to a certain level of sunshine, right? So then we have a different secretion of the hormone levels, you know, we call melatonin and serotonin from the pineal gland. So we have to really work with the unique, uniqueness of the individual so that really we can captivate and we can really bring back to the people's best version of your quantum body. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. And I, I do believe, um, you had touched on these things in podcast one, which is really good. So this is basically a, a deeper dive, right? Into right. really figuring out and trying to understand where you fall. And I remember after our podcast, I went online on your website and did the, um, the quiz and, I'm a, quiz. and yes. I'm a PETA. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> so, Based on what you just said a few seconds ago, there's even specific exercises that would be recommended for a PETA body type. Is that right? Correct. Yes. 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 Wow. And what would that be? I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, Dr. Isabel is more expert on this one. <laughs> PETA, it's because PETA is really high energy. Uh -huh. um, you, you already, you, you're already kind of using a lot of your energy. So, but like weights are really good for PETA type um and then even though and then doing some cardio is a, is a good exercise as well like for example for bata they're more skinny usually so then also lifting weights it's 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 a good exercise for them and then kapha for example for them is it's better to do more cardio and then running and so then pita will be will be more a combination between both of them a combination between the cardio and the weights but then kind of going more towards the weights wow. and then uh for example yoga is really good because pita is very hot it runs really like a high activity so then doing yoga will help balance that heat but not really recommended to do hot yoga um instead it will be more like a regular more calming relaxing stretching yoga um so then for for kapha doing more cardio running um doing things like that not really weights is recommended for kapha but because we are not just one type we have a predominant on one but then we have a little combination so then we just we can mix a little bit but then the most for pita will be light weights wow wow and i always find when you take um, a quiz and or one of those um, analysis that's the word I'm looking for mm -hmm. you you go into it with just like an open mind or at least I do and then I end up going oh that makes sense that's why mm -hmm. I like doing that right and it just sheds some yes. clarity and then sometimes if you were beating yourself up because you didn't like something or comparing yourself yeah. to somebody else or um, you know, just not feeling good about yourself. If you find out that, hey, this is just how I'm wired. <laughs> I know, the exactly. pressure off, right? Right. So for me, yeah, and then a lot of, mm -hmm. yeah, go on. 
But what I was thinking is a lot of people, they, they sign up, for example, for a special diet and, and exercise routine. And then like two friends will go and then one is having amazing results and she's doing exactly the same as the other one. And then the other one is frustrated because she's not losing weight. Things are upsetting her stomach or she's not, the, the exercise routine and the diet is not having the same results is because they're totally different bodies. And that's one of the things that we consistently tell people that you cannot compare yourself with somebody else because we're all quantum beings. We're all different. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a lot of things into consideration to be able to have better results. Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, I even just had this happen with a, a coaching client um, yesterday and, you know, she's, it is, you just have to ground yourself in the fact that not everything works the same for every person and, yeah. and move past that, even move past it from a, a place of your ego, right? Um, yes. Really what it is. And you know, just be, uh, be good with where you're at, but yeah, it can be frustrating. I mean, I've definitely had friends over the years that are, you know, great at running and like intense aerobics. And I'm like, no, I just like my walk and I like to lift weights. So mm -hmm. that's funny because I do like to put my little arm weights on. And, yes. um, as I've gotten older, I, I don't care as much, but it definitely used to bother me years ago when, they'd go to hot yoga or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, no, not really for me. <laughs> so yeah, it yeah. does. It just helps take the pressure off when you can learn certain aspects about yourself and just know that it's, it probably is just what it is. So cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. 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 And the third part that'll be Friday the 22nd is self. Yes, and that will be kind of the integration between the mind and the body is when we are connecting the brain and the heart. When we have coherence in the brain and the heart, we can achieve wholeness. And that's what we want. We want to help people find that pure, magnificent energy being that they are. Because by connecting the brain and the heart, then we are making things work the best for us and, and we can find that through nature that through amazing human being that we all are because we have the power within ourselves to do whatever we want and whatever we decide so to be able to feel whole to have um, unity with yourself and with the world this inner peace that we all desire and then just to decrease the stress to leave in an abundant life with no health issues, peace of mind. It's just, that's what we all deserve and desire. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so in addition to the Dr. Isabel's explanation that because the heart center, because you know, besides the brain, the heart, the scientists find out that the heart has the specific neurons. They have their own intelligence. So, you know, we, we all know the heart is in the center, the state of our being. This is true our nature. So when you focus on the heart today, it can emanate the electromagnetic hormonary, biochemically, um, you know, so many different directions that can create the specific bilateral communication from between the heart to the brain. Uh, so that this is the only way that we call the antidote for your brain. When the brain gets so fixed in the mind, it cannot difficult to shift from your fixated mind. You know, get so upset. How can I calm down? How can I help them transform? When you focus on your heart, and the, are able to allow your mind to start calming down, allow them to shift. So the self we really refer to back to as you know in your heart. Chinese medicine says heart is the emperor of the entire organ system. So that when the emperor is in a happy, healthy zone, rest of the, all those uh, um, armies, <laughs> they got to follow. So that's what we need to really bring back to the heart centers healings. <laughs> wow. So would you recommend, just in like a simple form as like a tip, let's say, if you meditated and you just held like a vision in, in your mind, of your heart, like that would be something that would be helpful? 
Oh, yes. yes, definitely. One of the things that we recommend is, and when you want to basically open up your energy center, the energy center in your heart, you just visualize something that brought you happiness, something that makes you happy, something that makes you feel physically expanded, like you're in the top of the mountain or um, that you, makes you feel really, really good. So then just when you visualize that and bring that memory to you, open up your heart, just, it's just feeling gratitude and love for yourself, for others, that will definitely be a really good exercise. And then we combine it with some breathing techniques and breathing exercises, then that will, will create that connection that we need between the brain and the heart. If we are able to have balance energy centers in our body, then all the systems in our body are going to be fu functioning in harmony and we're gonna achieve homeostasis or balance in our body. That's amazing. And how long would you recommend for a meditation? Because we are quantum beings that varies. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we encourage people is because a lot of people complain and say, no, I cannot meditate. I cannot sit still. I'm not able to do that. So we say, just go for a walk and just be with yourself, be in nature. That's meditation. And then if you're doing that, just put your attention in your heart, bring the memory that is going to bring you a smile in your face, that is going to bring you happiness and gratitude, a gratitude feeling and that's that's going to be meditation so we recommend like if you're if you're not experienced with meditation and you haven't tried it just five minutes and just concentrate on that that's perfect if you have been meditating for a long time and can take a lot longer like 30 minutes an hour hour and a half it's it's wonderful so it's depending on everybody as long as long as you even if you're doing your dishes and you're meditating, you're just concentrated and feeling all your senses, feeling the water, just the soap, everything, just being aware and conscious of what you're doing, that is a little bit of meditation in there. Mm -hmm. But then if you add that visualization, that opening of your heart, then it's going to amplify the results of the meditation. Mm -hmm. That is fabulous advice. And I hope that if that piece especially is new to someone out there listening, you rewind it and listen to it again to let it soak in. What I'm really taking from this is remembering that we're all different because, you know, everyone's so quick and generous, um, however you want to put it, to give advice, you know, and I, I love that, you know, think of it that we're all different because that is what is interesting is that so many people don't meditate and say they can't, they're too busy, they're scared. I was just talking to someone else about this too. But if you just go for a walk, I mean, I go for a walk and that hour to me, I actually work on, you know, opening my heart and thinking positive things. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to count that as one of my meditations for the day because you're right. Like it does. It puts you in a really good state of mind and being. And um, yeah, when I wash the dishes, I'll have to work on that one. Good idea. You describe so well, Marina. So yeah, it is the, you know, this is the beauty of the both sides. And you know, we have ancient wisdom that uh -huh. we know the nature, they you know. Well, it used to be that we were slow, we were so slow that we experienced the nature, the appreciation that we had. So now advancement of technology happened more and more. So this is great that we have technology allow us to communicate virtually. We can communicate all over the world. However, that we got caught, caught with the speed and the faster movement that we really forgot what's our nature, you know, what we need as a human, right? So yeah. uh, really the focus is that ancient wisdom combined with the uh, modern science through this ancient technology and the modern technology and allow us to you know, transform to really embrace the both sides of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And finding the balance, finding the balance in regard to, I'll just circle back a little bit to what I was saying, like, you know, someone else's advice and what feels good to you and, um, and figure and trying to find a place for that in your heart Mm -hmm. with what works. So that is very, wow. Well, thank you both so much for sharing. Is there anything else you want to add in about the journey to your quantum nature series that you guys are going to be kicking off on Friday, January 8th? Yes, well, no, we, we just, oh, go ahead. Don't just. We just want to invite everybody and it will be great to start 2021 with a different uh, mindset a mindset that is going to help you succeed and, and just start the year with the right way. Mm-hmm. We already had enough with the 2020, so we need to start a little bit different this year. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if people can visit to our website or to our Facebook, isamizu, you know, facebook.com slash isamizu, and we have our event bright announcement for the webinar sign up. So people can sign up and there's a Zoom link for it. So please feel free to visit the website. Perfect. And I will put that all in the show notes. So I just really appreciate both of you. I'm so glad that I know you. And I appreciate that we're going to all realize our unlimited potentiality to be the best versions of ourselves. And those are notes I took from you guys talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you both Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda.